Jim Jordan can't quite seem to get his story straight. Speak with course. the former president on January 6th. Did you of talk course. to the former president before, during, or after the attack on the Capitol? Of course I've it, talked to the president. All three? Of course I've talked to the president. I've been clear about that. I talk to him all the time. Of course I talked to the president. I talked to him that day. I've been clear about that. I don't recall the number of times. Was it before, during, or after the attack on the I talked Capitol? to the president after the attack. So not before or during? Right. Okay. And you would... Uh, and you. I've been clear about that. But he hasn't been clear about that at all. Did you talk to the former president that day? I've talked to the former president umpteen times, thousands, I mean, I may not thousands, I mean, on times, January but countless, 6th. countless times. I talked to the president. I never talk about what we talk about because I just don't think that's appropriate. Just like I don't talk about what happens in Republican conferences. So sure. I've talked to the president numerous times. Uh, I continue to talk to the president no, no, since no, I he's mean left on office. January 6th, Congressman. Yes, uh, I mean, I've talked to the president. Uh, I've talked to the president so many, I can't remember all the days I've talked to him, but I've certainly talked to the president. Did you speak with President Trump on January 6th? Yeah, I mean, I speak. I, I spoke with the president last week. I speak with the president all the time. I spoke with him on January six. I mean, I talk with President Trump all the time, and that's that's. I don't think that's unusual. Uh, I would expect members of Congress to talk with the president of the United States when they're trying to get done the things they told the voters in their district to do. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm I'm actually kind of amazed sometimes that people keep asking this. But of course, I talk to the president all the time. I talk to him, like I said, I talked to him last week. On January 6th, did you speak with him before, during, or after the Capitol was attacked? Uh, I'd have to go. I, 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 I spoke with him that day after, I think after. I don't know if I spoke with him in the morning or not. I, I just don't know. Uh, I'd have to go back. and. I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, th that when, when those conversations happened. But, um, but uh, what I know is I spoke with him all the time. CNN can report that the House Select Committee investigating the attack on the Capitol now has White House records that reveal details of a phone call Donald Trump made to Republican Congressman Jim Jordan on the morning of the insurrection. Two sources who have reviewed the call records tell CNN that Trump spoke on a phone at the White House residence with Jordan for 10 minutes that morning. And that afternoon, Jordan took to the House floor to object to the certification of President Joe Biden's Electoral College win and pro-Trump supporters attack the U.S. Capitol. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And Jim Jordan's democracy score is an F. He voted to throw away the democratic process in favor of appointing Donald Trump king on the merit of his personal divine word. Everything that comes out of Jim Jordan's mouth amounts to libel. He, of course, voted against the January 6th commission and stood up to protect Trump's crime buddies like Steve Bannon. Now, this is significant for a number of reasons. The first being uh, that Jordan has been completely evasive as to his communication, how many times he spoke to the president, how long they spoke, spoke for, and what they even talked about. And he has contradicted himself numerous times as to the number of times that they spoke. Hey, Jimmy, if the 2020 election was so corrupt and stolen, how does that reflect on your election in Ohio's fourth? Convenient that your election was so fair and proper, but Donald Trump was so criminally cheated on the very same ballot. But like all Jim Jordan arguments, there isn't a stitch of logical consistency to any of it. Our uh, reporter, Annie Grayer, spoke with Jim Jordan today, informed him that we were made aware of these White House call records and asked him to respond. And Jordan said that he, again, couldn't remember. And he said that the only time he specifically remembered talking to the president on that day was when he walked off the floor of the House of Representatives on January 6th. Well, keep in mind, he's never revealed that information before. So that is completely new and a different story than he's told in previous incarnations. He also told Annie today that he believes that he spoke to the former president a number of times on January 6th. So this is the first tangible evidence that we have of communication between Trump and Jordan on that day. Obviously, the committee is very interested in the content of that call, what they spoke about. That's one of the reasons that they want Jordan to appear before their committee. Jordan previously said that he had nothing to hide. He has since stonewalled the committee and said that he will not appear before them. Now, keep in mind, the committee does have the option of issuing subpoenas. They're wrestling with that decision right now because they fear that it may be difficult from a legal perspective to subpoena their own members of Congress Congress to appear before them. So finding out this information, that is something that is very important to this committee, but it's clear that it will still be difficult to nail everything down that they're looking for. But this is a huge piece of that puzzle. This guy is a hothead full of hot air. And that's what the MAGA Legion responds to. Violence, hostility,
humility and the overall noise of the speaker, never the words that are being said, the arguments being proposed or the evidence, in this case, lack of evidence put forward. MAGAs just want to fly 50-foot Trump flags to vent their anger and broadcast their stupidity to all of the world. When they sack the Capitol, they even rip down old glory to put Trump's toilet tissue up instead. Jim Jordan represents that violent anti-American element of our society and only exacerbates it, capitalizes off of it. This guy hasn't voted on the right side of an issue in his entire career, nor will he ever. He'll just ride the coattails of the MAGA movement and get a free pass into office because these fools see Jim Jordan's smug face on TV yelling at the same people that they irrationally hate. Do any of these people ever stop to think maybe hate is not a constructive thing? Maybe hate is a quality that an elected representative should not have, especially in abundance the way Jim Jordan has? Because this guy is nothing but hate. Have you ever seen him have a calm, rational conversation? It's always finger pointing, shouting, and kissing Trump's butt in the most obnoxious ways possible. But this is modern soundbite politics, isn't it? Nobody watches a full hearing or reads an entire bill. These morons watch Fox to get a 10 second clip of him shouting and then 10 minutes of Tucker Carlson shoving his head up Jordan Jordan's butt to tell him how great his 10 seconds of shouting was. And this all conveniently works the same in the hierarchy of the Republican Party. Trump needs his Jim Jordan type disciples to band together in a little ministry of evil, going on the various propaganda channels to slander opponents and pump sunshine up Trump's backside. That's how this whole thing works. It's a, like a miserable Republican food chain. Everybody has their place in pecking order. Jim Jordan knows his role. Someday when a safe backstabbing opportunity comes up, he'll look to ascend to the next rung of the ladder of the Republican crime empire. The thing that gets me is how the Jim Jordans of the world get elected to Congress. Shouldn't there be a high standard for public office, not the absolute lowest? Literally anybody can be a vile, obnoxious noise maker, the same as Jim Jordan. But this guy gets millions of public taxpayer dollars spread over his office each year to keep abusing the populace. It's really absurd, and it's really a disgrace to America. Something has to stop this exponential drift of the Republican Party to the insanely far right because Jim Jordan and people like him are exactly the types taking this country the wrong way. And that's a fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.